and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I have another book talk video to share with you guys. And today their book we're talking about is called Bellwether by Susanna Kearsley. Um, this book, interestingly enough, was published here in Canada in April, but from what I'm reading it doesn't come out in America until August 7th. So this will give you a little, for my American friends watching, this will give you a little sneak peek. So if you're interested, it does come out soon. So if you've been around my channel for any length of time, you know that I love historical fiction. Whether it's based on true events or it's something made up entirely, I just love it. I love getting transported to bygone eras through storytelling and um, this book is that. The story is told from three points of view. One point of view is in the present and then the two points of view are um, from the 1700s. So the, the story in general, all of it, takes place on the eastern shore of New Jersey and for the 1700s part it takes place during the Seven Year War where the British and the French were fighting on American and Canadian soil. So in the present day part um, we have Charlie, short for Charlotte. She is a museum curator and she is now moving um, she's leaving behind her boyfriend, although the relationship seems a little rocky and kind of not not one that's going to stand the test of time anyway. And she's moving not too far away, like it's close enough that they can get together every, you know, a couple times a month, but it's far enough away that it's definitely going to have an impact on their relationship. She's moving down there to work at Wild House. Wild House is a very old home that's been there for generations and generations and she's going to kind of curate the home, get it ready so it can have its grand opening and people can come in and see it and it'll be a whole thing. And she has family ties to this house and this town in general. Um, she, you know, she mentions her last name and it's one that um, even if people don't know her or her parents, they definitely know of the long-standing line that her family has had in this town. So it kind of just, we get set up with her. Um, we know that she's also living with her niece because her brother died and so she's caring for her niece and um, we get a little bit of the family dynamic but not not too much at the beginning and then it just kind of moves on to her showing us um, the things around Wild House that need to get done and how she's going to do them. And we meet some of the other players that are working um, at and for this house. And they're all, they're all very interesting characters. Next we meet Lydia in the 1700s and she is a young woman. She lives with her father and her brothers. Her mother has passed away and so she's now like the woman of the house. We kind of get the dynamic that um, her father and her brothers are very respectful of her, you know, in, in a time when that wasn't necessarily going to be the case. And, um, you know, they care about her opinions, her thoughts. We learn that she is welcome to share and to learn and to grow. They're not men that are afraid of that. And um, so that's lovely. And then we meet Jean-Philippe as he is a prisoner, a captive and he's being sent, him and another French officer are being sent to uh, the Wilds house to live out their punishment. Kind of, they've, they've been captured and now they have to stay with a family and this is the family that they're staying with. So they're both French but um, the, one, the one soldier, he knows a bit of English and he's from France. Whereas Jean-Philippe, he knows very little English and he is from Quebec up in Canada. <laughs> and from there it just rolls back and forth through these three people's perspective. Um, when we're visiting Lydia and Jean-Philippe in the 1700s, we're shown that Lydia has zero interest in him at first. He, she is completely off put by him. While on the other side, he has a very off-putting demeanor like he's very shut down and very cold but he's been intrigued with her since he first saw her 
and then back with Charlie in the present day, we see her begin to unravel the secrets that the house holds. Because of course when you go into a home that old, um, that's been preserved with as much as possible, there's so many stories to be told and secrets that have been kept. And Charlie starts to realize that the story that's been told to the public isn't necessarily the true story. Because the story that's been told to the public is that Lydia and Jean-Philippe had a very ill-fated love affair that ended in tragedy, but Charlie's starting to see that maybe that's not entirely true. And it becomes so fun to go along on this journey with Charlie as she uncovers the mysteries and finds out what's true and what's not. And I'm not going to go into all the spoilers for this video just because there's a lot to unpack here and we just wouldn't have enough time. And since the book isn't even released yet, I don't want to accidentally spoil it for someone who has been wanting to see it. Because what I do know is that Susanna Kearsley here has a ton, ton, ton of books out. This was my first one that I've read of hers. So I'm pretty excited to go now and get to read some of her back catalog. I love finding an author that I like that I can then go and discover more of afterwards. My favorite thing about this book is how atmospheric it is. It's beautiful, it's a pleasant time and place to visit, both times and places that are talked about in this book. I also love the characters. I think every one of the characters is so well written. I think they're multi-dimensional, they're sympathetic, and I care about them. And that is a big deal for me. If I don't care about a character, especially a main one, I'm out of there. I don't care. I check out mentally. I always finish the book though because it's like my thing. No matter how bad a book is, I have to get to the end. Do you do that too? Or are you someone who can sort of duck out you know, halfway through or whatever. I just, I always gotta finish it just in case. And I was like, what if? What if it gets better? I, I keep holding out hope until that final sentence is read and I'm like, oh no. But, um, but mentally I'll just check out if I don't care about the characters. To me, sometimes that's even more important than the plot. Because, you know, if so many plots have already been hashed out in one way or another before. Um, you know, you know how they say every story's already been told. It's just a matter of giving a particular story your own voice. And so, so yeah, characters are so important. And these ones are well written, multi-dimensional, and I care about them. So yes. My one complaint with this book, um, and it has nothing to do with the writing or the story or anything like that, because I think she's a fantastic writer. I just found this book to be a little slow at times. I found there was a lot of build up before we get to the action. Um, and I say action, there's not a lot of action. <laughs> but like, I would have liked a bit more drama, a bit more um, spice, I don't know, a bit more drama because there's a lot of love stories happening in here. There's the one that eventually blossoms between Lydia and Jean-Philippe. Philippe, yeah. There's the one that eventually blossoms between Lydia and Jean-Philippe. And I do mean eventually blossoms because it takes forever for us to get there. And, um, you know, I'm all about a good slow burn, but it gets to the point where it's like, we gotta, we gotta pick up the pace. Um, and then Charlie has her own sort of blossoming romance as well. And again, it takes a long time to get anywhere with it. So that's my one complaint. It's a bit slow. So know that going into it. And you know, I don't mind something that's a bit slow if the payoff's good. And for me, the payoff was good. I loved the story. I loved, I loved the characters. I loved it all. So, but other than that, I thought it was fantastic. So if you love historical fiction, if you love a good love story, if you love reading about the Seven Year War, if you love any of those things, I think you would really enjoy Bellwether. Oh, oh, here's another thing. Bellwether, the title, it's the name of a 
ship in the book. Um, I just, I didn't, I don't know why she named it after that ship. Because to me at least, the ship didn't play a very like pivotal, important part in the story. And I kept waiting for it to. I kept waiting for it to tie in and then me to be like, oh, that's why she called it Bellwether. But I didn't get there. And maybe I missed something. Maybe I just didn't get something. Um, so if you've read it and you get it, let me know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful word. I like that that's the name, but I don't get why that's the name. So, yeah. Also, this is the second book this year that I've read that touched on the Seven Year War. And the Seven Year War is one that really impacted Canada. Um, and so it's, it's interesting to get to look into that. And I've I've accidentally read two books this year about the Seven Year War. Like I didn't, I didn't seek them out. I didn't realize that that's that that's what they dealt with in part. Um, so that's interesting that I just stumbled upon two books that take place during the Seven Year War. But yeah, it's interesting to read as a Canadian more about that. And I don't know a ton about that. I didn't. I don't think we learned a whole lot about it. You know, you get World War One and Two, but um, the Seven Year War I don't remember learning too much about. So yeah, maybe I'll do some more research into it and see what other books I can find about it. Not about it. Neither of these books are about it, but it takes, it's kind of like a character in the book as well because it, it plays a part. So yeah, interesting stuff. I love, I love learning stuff like that. Um, I guess that's why I enjoy historical fiction to some degree because I find I'm always learning something new from it and that's always fun. Anyway, you guys. That's gonna do it for me for today. I know a lot of you love the more spoilery book reviews, but just because this one isn't out in America yet, I didn't want to spoil too much for anyone accidentally, um, especially if they're like a fan of Susanna's and they just wanted a, a briefer review. We'll be back next week with the more spoiler ridden reviews, but I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I hope it's warm and sunny where you are, but not too warm over it. I'm ready for winter. And you guys are the only ones I can say that to because if I told that to anybody who lived here, they'd think I was insane. <laughs> because we get uh, like nine months of cold followed by like two, followed by like three months of brief warm periods and then real hot periods and then back to the cold. But I am ready for the cold, you guys. Bring on the snowflakes and the scarves. I'm ready. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.